Hey everybody, this is Spooner47 here. I'm just going to do a review of the recently released title that came out this week, uh, on the 30th, I believe, uh, Hitman Damnation. Um, a book, kind of the uh, prequel to Hitman Absolution and sort of a little sequel to Absolution, but I don't, you know, I'll get into a little detail on that. Um, this is written by Raymond Benson. He has written some... He's written a Black Stiletto and a sequel to Black Stiletto, Black and White, and some James Bond novels, but uh, I'm just going to do a little quick review on it, on, you know, give you my thoughts on what I think and how it is in terms of quality, and then I'll get into a little um, spoilers discussion in, uh, on uh, what happened in the book. Um, this book is takes place about, uh, I guess, after the events of Blood Money, though we never really get... Uh, a real explanation on exactly what happened after Blood Money. Like, it's like they never, like, it never, it's kind of like it never happened from, you know, from when I read. They never really mentioned it, only in terms of some references to some missions he did in the video game Blood Money, but nothing to, you know, what happened at the very end. So that's a bit unfortunate there, but it, um, it takes place in the beginning where 47 is in the, a mission on the Himalayas, and then Diana is, you know, um, on the other end of the line with, you know, is always in communication with 47 and she has cameras set up on different areas of where she is currently located while he's, while she's helping 47 out on a mission, um, to take out an, an, a target, um, by putting a, a sort of, um, sonic kind of, kind of a sonic emitter or whatever to, um, place it on 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 the side of a on a mountain, so it would create an avalanche and just kill the kill the target that easy and make it look an accident. And um, and there's something's going on where Diana is in constant surveillance of where she is at, and then um, certain certain uh, people show up with you know with guns and and bulletproof vests to take in Diana, and then it turns out that she has taken some sort of package from the agency. Um, they don't really, I don't think they've really said what exactly the package is, but it's some sort of, um, project that Benjamin Travis is working on, which is a newer character that's going to be introduced in Absolution, which is going to be, um, I guess he kind of runs the, the ICA department there. Not a big, not a big boss or anything. He's like, he kind of, um, kind of like the manager or supervisor of the ICA. The ICA is, um, a secret kind of organization where they, set out um contract killing so anyone from you know a senator who wants somebody killed and then they call them and there's a very secret uh organization that a 47 works for so so diana uh they mentioned in the, in the book that something is he's working on some sort of project that diana doesn't really agree with and and diana doesn't seem like the, doesn't seem like the kind of person who would turn her back on on her job, she seems very loyal. So there must be something really big that he's working on. That uh, that Diana decided to take action in her own hands, and she's kind of on the run now from the agency. So the, when that happened, she had to escape. She has to escape and you know leave Forty Seven hanging. So you didn't. So Forty Seven had to f finish the mission on his own because he had no clue where exactly to put in that um, sonic transmitter or whatever. It sounds kind of sounds like um, it, se it sends out like sonic pulses. So you know, created avalanche and kill the target like I mentioned earlier so a little bit of, of the uh, the mission goes wrong before someone still accomplishes it and then he gets injured um, as a result and I guess he gets hit by the avalanche as well but since he's you know kind of you know gen genetically engineered by uh, man I'm not gonna get to the whole story of his origins but if you're if you're um, to get to go to go by it a little bit quickly just to give you a little little um, insight on you know, his inception. Um, Dr. Ormeyer is was a doctor that he, he worked with like four four other um, people that were, you know, all d different ethnicities and they took their DNA and and put it into one and he was creating, trying to create a perfect um, super soldier in, in a sense, not like Captain America, but like a soldier that doesn't have to rely on his feelings because he feels that feelings will get in the way of accomplishing things so in, in, in a nutshell 47 ended up being the perfect um clone you know creation that or has created and you know and that's how 
you know, he Cordyceps was created. So I won't get into anything else because that's uh, you know that's another story. They even talk about that's what happened in the beginning of the first game. Um, you know, through through that, he you know he has um, he's able to you know sustain injury and and things like that more more than uh, than an average person. To, to put it to put it that way, so he ends up surviving the, you know, getting also hit by the the avalanche and gets um, injured in the process and gets um, saved by some local um, some local people in, uh, in the Himalayas and they nurse him back to health and then he ends up getting um, back to normal um, and along the way they give him um, painkillers and he kind of ends up getting becoming dependent on painkillers which is Say what you will, um, I was a little mixed on that. I wasn't sure what to think of it, but it, the way they explain it in the book and how 47 says that he he doesn't um, have the same effects when he takes, you know, if he does, if he takes alcohol, if he drinks alcohol or takes, you know, drugs like painkillers and things like that, they don't have um, a, a stronger or similar effect to regular, you know, human beings. He has the higher tolerance for those and then he talks about how he could he could quit any time but he kind of likes the way it feels when he takes them so you know, it kind of becomes apparent that he's addicted to those painkillers and that becomes prevalent throughout the, throughout the book and he isn't really the same the same um assassin as he once was when he got injured in during the that mission in the himalayas and that once he gets he and then he became, he became missing for a while and the agency has been looking for him since and he can't, he, he's come back to work for them a year after, and um, just so he can, and he, he meets up with Benjamin Travis, you know, and and Jade, his assistant. And initially, they um, Benjamin Travis has an ulterior motive, obviously, that he, he really wants to find Forty Seven, and, and he ends up he ends up finding him in in order to use him for a mission and also to find Diana, so they can get the package back, because he. He has to put on the. He has a. He has a project that he's working on. He has to put it on hold in order for um, the head, you know, the head people of the agency that doesn't become aware that um, he fucked up. So he's kind of putting this project on hold, saying for for whatever reason, but he, he's not telling them why. To the, he's not telling them that Diana took whatever package that's vital to that to his project that he's working on. I'm thinking it's some sort of, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm not gonna speculate, but. Um, I'm just giving you a quick, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a uh, spoiler there. No, no, not really a spoiler. I'm just going to get into, trying to get into um, what the what the title is about. But pretty much he he um, he's assigned to a mission to assassinate a political figure known as Dana Linder, I believe. And also Charlie Wilkins, which is he, Charlie Wilkins is a guy who has his own, you know, TV show, he's got his own restaurant, he's kind of have a, you know, an empire, he's kind of one of those guys that, you know, if you see on TV that are always, you know, spouting off about religion and, you know, in a huge, huge crowd of people seeing him, you know, doing his religious thing and he's kind of, he's developing his own type of religion where it embraces just different, you know, diversities of religions and, you know, people love him and, uh, excuse me, um, they all, they, you know, they all love him and find him a very, a very um, charming guy, so um, you know, 47 is assigned to assassinate both of them. But the the person who assigned the mission says that um, that to kill to kill Dana Linder is you know another political figure that's running for office, and also kill Charlie Wilkins. But after he, after he kills Dana, um, not to kill Charlie until he until they un, until uh, the client says so. And um, also, he has to be. It has to look like it was an inside job where someone within his camp was responsible for his death. So, forty-seven has to go on the cover, to on the cover in kind of this church of of the will is what they call um, Charlie Wilkins. Is you know his whole thing where he has an area and I forgot where it was, but you know it's just kind of this a big compound of of people that work for him and you know don't believe him what he spouts and. Um, 47 had to get close to somebody so he gets close to um someone a woman named Helen McAdams who's you know he she is also you know very well you know she very very much sees Charlie Wilkins and you know in a high regard she respects him and 
ultimately the reason why she's still alive and we'll get into that a bit later but and you know 47 also ends up developing some sort of um you know some relationship to her because he has to get close to her in order you know to in order to you know further um make it easier for him to get to charlie wilkins you know just to just get in and and closer to her and to helen mcadams and then so kind of being um he also kind of feeling something for her. They never really get it really in, uh, physical and intimate, but he he has kind of developed a relationship with her, much like um, he developed a relationship with Father Victorio in uh, Hitman Two: Son of the Assassin. Much like that, very you know emotional and 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 mental way he, he gets close to her and and it's, I just this I think this book is written very very well and I felt that. Whatever you know, kind of nitpicks you have, and that's, and I guess that's fine for you to have. But I really didn't have any problem with this book. I thought that it was really well written. Well written. That's not like I'm a foot here, but the only kind of small issues, and it's very small issue that they never really explained what happened after the events of Blood Money, and you know, for those who played, they know how it ended, but they never really made any reference to it. It's just, it's like it kind of never happened in a way, but. Regardless of that, and from the way this book is um, develops, it seems like it's pretty canon. It seems like it's going to be, it ties in to what's going to happen in the very, I guess, very beginning of the game, I assume, is where, it's no spoilers, but um, 47 kills Diana. And um, that's really all about it. I thought it was, you know, like I said before, well written, and it, it adds, it gets a bit more personal than, than the last title did with 47. Um, the, hit, the the last title, Hitman Enemy Within, it was written by a different author, but this, I, I I really prefer this one more. It was you know, it, I read this whole thing in you know, about four days. I I probably would have read it a lot quicker than I did, but I was you know in the process of playing uh, Assassin's Creed Three and WWE Thirteen along the side, so I didn't didn't really sink my teeth into it as you know as much as I wanted to. But I you know I, I read it and finished it in about you know three or four days and. It is really well written. I really like the, the the approach the author took. It seems like he, for the most part, I think he got most of what Forty Seven is about. And and I I probably assume he didn't really doesn't know much about the games or the character. That I'm I'm sure he just got a huge you know a huge sheet sheet of facts about Forty Seven and things and how and you know what what he's all about. And probably got possibly also probably also spoke to. The the developers of the game as well, just to get so you can get more of an insight of what the you know the world and characters are all about. Definitely, I'm I'm, I'm sure. Usually, the last book, uh, IO Interactive had some had, had some input in consulting with the with the author uh, of these books, which is which is which is how it should be, I think. Um, if you're gonna make a a, a novel. Um, based upon a video game, and I think it's the only way to do it, just to get the, to get it right. So for the most part, I think it's a really good title, a really good book. Um, if you if you're really a, if you're really a fan of the of the Hitman series, like I am, I think Agent Forty Seven is a very very interesting character, a very underrated character in terms of the, the video game character. And I think he's a very complex character, which you think you know what he's all about, but at the same time, he's you don't really. I don't think he even knows. He doesn't even really know much about himself because he tries to be normal, but it all seems very, you know, foreign to him. Even when he was trying to get personal with um, Helen McAdams in order to, you know, successfully accomplish his mission, which he did, um, did all that, but he just never felt very comfortable with it. He can, he, he's good at disguising and blending in with environments, and he can do, he can just put on a persona. As as simple as that, you know, the snap of the snap of the fingers, he can do it, and and he just doesn't feel, you know, he doesn't feel that it's very him, you know. It's when he does it, he does he doesn't feel embarrassed or anything. He just he doesn't feel very comfortable, you know, getting close to anyone. I mean, the only people he's really gotten close with was, you know, Father Victorio and him at Two Silent Assassin, and you know, then Diana has kind of been the only person that he's been working with very close and he's not really even sure exactly if whether Diana betrayed him or not and he I think he intends to find out exactly 
probably what's going to happen in, in this absolution. And, and obviously, I think Benjamin Travis is, is using him, obviously. And since he's been going through, and also he quit um, taking the painkillers during the turned the book and he went through this whole withdrawal thing that took that takes months to get over but he got over it in a couple of days and he kind of kind of got his senses back as well and uh yeah uh i'm just going to split this up and um you know thanks everyone for watching is i think it's a good book if you're a fan of the, of the series if you're not i think it's still a really good read to check out and it might even get you uh, interested in the in, in the games so thanks everyone for watching uh, it's been 47, signing off. And now I'll continue on with um, the spoiler part of the of this review. Um, for the most part, I did enjoy this from you know beginning to end. You know, I you know really, I really didn't mind the the thing 47 I'm going through with you know his addiction to painkiller, which he didn't even he didn't even think he, he was addicted because he never, I don't think he's ever experienced that as you know, until like Helen McAdams, when he got close to Helen McAdams, um, she was talking about how before joining the church of, of Charlie Wilkins, that she was a drug addict and, um, you know, took things from oxycodone and, you know, heroin and even to a point where she just got to a very low point in her life where she almost, where she cut herself in, in hopes to you know, end her life, but it just, it didn't happen. She ended up surviving, and she has a, you know, scar on her arm that she showed 47, and, you know, pretty much she's quit. She quit and joined the, you know, religious route to, in order to, you know, rectify for what she has gone through and hopefully make a better life for herself, and she, and she was kind of an intro, introvert before she met 47. She kind of, developed a kind of attachment to her. She was willing to get into a relationship with him and, you know, 47 for his cover was kind of in a relationship with him more as a close friends than anything else. He never really got intimate with her um, sexually or anything, just more emotional and mental. And 47 never experienced any of that because he's been, you know, born and raised to kill. So he's never really experienced that. It's funny, it's a funny moment in there where he's like, he says, um, uh, I just want to be friends. I'm not gay or anything, but I just want to be friends. And I thought that was pretty good, pretty good moment there. And uh, and he's one of those things where he goes through um, when he's going through withdrawals, and when and before he goes through withdrawals, he's having these dreams about death, you know, coming after him. And um, at the end, it says that he, the death was him. You know, there's some sort of. Uh, uh, significance there at the end and and uh when he, when he does ends up killing um uh, charlie wilkins before that um pretty much the whole thing with charlie wilkins is is he was after 47 killed dana linder which was um which charlie wilkins knew as a young child it, it was kind of like a second father to him when they when when her parents died and um she was kind of running for Kind of, she kind of, he kind of, Charlie kind of egged her on to run for a political campaign, uh, you know, for president. And after 47 killed her, um, Charlie Wilkins decided to take her place and run for president. And people so, you know, were so up, you know, they they really, um, really like Charlie Wilkins, and, and it seemed like he was going to win the presidential election. And then you end up finding out about the, which they explain in the book, um, the new, new Mala army or something like that. Which is kind of like a radical, you know, group of people that are just kind of fed up with, you know, the current administration and government, and you want, they want a revolution and things like that. And they've been doing these, um, you know, bombings and killings in certain areas to send their messages. And he later found out that Charlie is in cahoots with them in order to, for him to succeed and win the presidency. And he ends up, he's pretty much a fascist, as you later find out in the book. And the leader of of the new model army is um, someone named Cromwell, which you later find out was the brother of of Dana, Dana Lender, who who um, he was a marine who was presumed dead, and then he got plastic surgery to change his his looks, and he just um, he you know Cromwell tells the story in forty seven when. Uh, I know I'm going, I'm going all, over the, all over the place, but 
um, before it finally infiltrates the, the Church of Will to kill Charlie Wilkins. Um, Charlie knew he was coming because um, he was the one who made, he was the client that um, the, he, that hired, that he hired the agency to kill um, Dana Linder in order for him to become president. And, and he also put the hit out on himself because he, he wanted to make it look like when, when 47 was about to kill him, that, um, that he would be ready for him and then that they would kill whoever the assassin was that was meant to kill Charlie and to make it look like he was being targeted by, you know, they, they, they go through the, the book of saying that people are believing that the government killed Dana Linder and things like that, that. Like, you know, the president that at the time that's running against Dana was responsible for it. And they're trying to send this whole message out to people to make them believe that the, that the government and the CIA are, you know, after her and Charlie Wilkins. So just to gain more sympathy and in order for him to win the election. And um, Cromwell, um, you know, the, 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 the brother of Dana was, he tells a story about him when he was in, in uh, Iraq and tell, talking about how, they were about to shoot down a, a school where, you know, women and children were there. And he went inside, you know, f you know, not following orders and to see that there was nothing in there. But still his, you know, higher, his higher officers still shot the whole place up and burned it to the ground. And he ended up um, surviving and crawling out of it. But he was very disfigured and, you know, left, left the, uh, the army or Marine Corps and then changed his identity to just to revolt against uh, the, the government in the U.S. and things like that, and, and then formed the new model army. And Wilkins used that, used that, you know, hate against the government to to, um, to do all this in order to gain sympathy and, and gain votes. And, you know, the final the final climax of the book was with 47, um, uh, goes after Charlie Wilkins. Before that, sorry, I'm just going all over the place with this book, but... Uh, Helen finds out that uh, 47 is an assassin trying to kill Charlie Wilkins, and she's very you know, upset and devastated by it because she felt used and things like that, which, you know, that's what 47 did, but he ended up getting close at the same time, you know, emotionally and mentally. And he, and he vowed not to let any harm happen to her and protect her and things like that. And, uh, you know, the climax of the, of the book where 47 is... Now, there there were other things in there that happened. I, I'm just I'm not gonna go through because it's already a long video as it is. But uh, 47 kills Charlie Wilkins with a bus. <laughs> he was having a campaign uh, rally at a mall, and um, the new mall army was some of the members were dressed up as mm, was dressed up as the Marines or what are they dressed up as? They're dressed up as you know some Marines or some other. Um, they were dressed up as the National Guard, so they were shoot. They really were shooting up a crowd full of people, and Charlie knew, you know, what he was doing. He, he just got out of control, and for better, or for worse, or for worse, really, he was, you know, he's a piece of shit doing that and trying to gain sympathy and votes to win the election. He he sacrifices people who came to see him in order for him to win the election just to get shot down, and you know, forty seven put the was you know, shooting people left and right uh, were part of the New Model Army, and, you know, Helen was there, and she, it's just, it was sad that um, she ended up getting shot, um, and some of the, the bullets went through her lungs, and 47 was, um, got a hold of her, and and he knew that she was going to die in like a minute, and so she, you know, put the end to, put the end to her misery, it's just so she wouldn't die in pain. She shot he shot her in, in the heart with his, with his gun. You know, he said, 47 said to her, I'm sorry. And then, yeah, I thought that was pretty, pretty good scene there. And it's not, and, and you know, it, it goes through this whole thing where he talks about how, you know, he can, can feel emotion after all. He doesn't feel like he's a machine, which, which was what he, you know, was feeling before, and, and this is not something new, people. I think he, 47 can't feel, it's just that he chooses not to, because that's just the way he was, he's wired, man. Um, and I mean, that's how he, 
that's what happened in Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. He went after to save his friend Vittorio because, you know, he he tried to turn to religion in order to kind of stray away from what he did, but he can never really escape it. He can always, he says, that's what he was always going to be doing, uh, killing people and, you know, wearing fancy suits and e eating fine meals that are expensive. So um, once that happens, that you when know, he ends up at ending uh, Helen's pain, by shooting her in the heart, and he ends up killing Charlie Wilkins, and that's um, with a bus. And then he, he he hits the. It was like this whole chase down um, in Washington D.C. All this this whole chase that ended near like a lake, and he ends up hitting hitting Charlie Wilkins with a bus and crashing into like a lake, a river, and um, and they're disappearing again. And the agency is looking for him. And, um, you know, Benjamin Travis is pissed off and very concerned because he's fucked. Because he's, he can't, because he's lost 47, but the mission it was completed. But he lost 47 and he hasn't found Diana yet. And up until that moment, all seemed pretty, all pretty low and gloomy for Benjamin Travis. But until Jade, his assistant, told him that they found Diana, all they need to do is just find 47. And um, the epilogue of what I think was... No, it wasn't the, the you know the final pages of the book was forty seven in in Guadalajara in hiding. He said that he was gonna, he's going to go back to the agency soon, but not right now. He was just kind of chilling, really. You know how the end of Max Payne three he was kind of chilling, done with things, but forty seven will be back for that. Uh, chilling in Guadalajara, and then the epilogue was Diana uh, as a residence that nobody knows about. And you know, except the I except the agency and the ICA know about it, that's why they're going to go after it's in 47 after and you know the beginning of absolution which probably will happen and uh, that's that was the part of the epilogue she has a, a house in Iowa or something somewhere around the around that region so that's a little spoiler touch there ladies and gentlemen I, I'm sure you're you're as lost as I am no, I'm not. I'm not lost, but I'm, I'm sure he's lost if you haven't uh, read the book or anything. But that's 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 there for if you're a fan of the series and want to know what happens in the book. I kind of pretty pretty much highlighted the 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 main parts of what happened in the in the book. It's a really good read. I highly recommend it if you haven't picked it up already. It's it's a good read. You know, like I said before, the only minor grievances I have towards it is that it doesn't um, it doesn't really explain anything that happened. Um, after Blood Money, but it's a, I think it's a good, you know, a good epilogue of a good prologue. I mean, what I'm saying, epilogue, a, a good prologue to Hitman Absolution. So, if you're if you if you like reading and you want to want to read something that's you know about Agent Forty Seven, I think it's a good it's a good book to pick up. It gets pretty personal with Forty Seven. I and I you know I look forward to the game and. I hope that uh, IO does good with the story and gameplay and get more personal with 47 to get that much more into it. So, thanks everyone for listening. I'm Spoiler 47, signing off.